Welcome back, Pipers. Hoppin' and Piper Kevin here, coming to you from the Arkansas River Valley in America. And today we are going to review Old Toby, part of the Middle Earth series of pipe blends at the Country Squire. Old Toby. Old Toby was one of three main varieties of pipe weed that Tolkien describes in his Middle Earth. Um, three varieties anyway that grew in the region around Longbottom in the Shire South Farthing. So you had Old Toby, and you had Longbottom Leaf, and you had Southern Star. So, Old Toby was named after Tobald Hornblower, um, also known as Old Toby. And he is credited as being the hobbit that actually introduced pipeweed to the Shire. So, Halfling's Leaf, also known as just leaf, but pipeweed. And in Tolkien's lore, um, pipeweed became very important. Cultivating and exporting that herb became a, a, a very industry producing uh, component of the Shire. So, very popular, very popular in Middle Earth. I'm going to be smoking Old Toby today out of my Stanwell, Hans Christian Andersen. So I did do a full Pipe Story video on this. If you'd like to see that, you can find that in the Pipe Stories playlist. I'm going to go ahead and get this lit so I can continue talking to you about this blend as I smoke it. Now you will buy this in bulk at the Country Squire online. And they do have many different Middle Earth inspired blends. I believe I've tried them all now. I'll tell you what my top three are at the end of the video, but let's talk about Old Toby. I guess we should start with the bag note. And I've already got it in a little tin here, but let's give this a good smell. Before we do that, you can see it's kind of a coarse cut. And my understanding is this is Virginia's and Burley, and some Louisiana Perique as well, with a significant amount of sugar casing. Yeah, this has some snickerdoodle qualities to it. You ever had a snickerdoodle cookie? It very, very much smells like a dessert. You could also smell almost like a, like a gooey chocolate brownie with some of that buttercream vanilla icing on there. Very dessert-like, in other words. It smells really good. Yes, sir. Old Toby. This is a good aromatic. Spoiler, this is a good aromatic. As it should be with a name like that. tell you this, it really has a very pleasant room note. I've told you this before, there's only a couple blends that when I'm smoking them, if my wife smells them, she'll be like, what is that? That one smells really good. <laughs> well, this is one you can add to the list. Okay, 
Let's talk about the flavor profile of Old Toby. Man, pipes are really like time machines a lot of times. <laughs> you can be smoking something and it'll just immediately trigger back to some memory in time. That happens to me all the time when I'm smoking blends. Just reminiscent of certain things that, you know, flavors and aromas will trigger those memories. My mother was a preschool teacher. And she was my preschool teacher when I was two, three, and four years old. And then when it was time for me to go to kindergarten, she had a different teacher be my teacher so that I would get used to her not being my teacher all the time. And then when I went to grade school, I of course had different teachers, but after I went to grade school, my mother purchased and developed her own kindergarten and daycare center. And as my father was a country preacher and never made a lot of money at all, um, really my mother's kindergarten and daycare business was the primary source of income for our family. And I would often hang out there a lot during the summer because it was summer break for me and of course the kindergarten and daycare center continued on and so I would end up helping out a lot at the family business um, during the summers as a grade schooler so I was the big kid in the building with uh, with the youngers and my mother every year would work it out with an ice cream shop one block away from the kindergarten and daycare center. One block away was a Dairy Queen. Now, have you heard of Dairy Queens before? They were really a fixture of the social fabric of Midwest America for decades, 50s, 60s. I think technically they were around in the 40s really caught on 50s, 60s. Um, this was after that. Uh, this was, my childhood was 70s and 80s, and we'd specifically probably be talking about uh, late 70s here, but she worked it out to where every, every year for one day during the summer, the Dairy Queen would allow her to, under teacher supervision, walk all the students from the kindergarten and daycare center down the sidewalk to the Dairy Queen and she worked out some deal with them where every child could get a small ice cream cone. Now if you've ever seen Dairy Queen ice cream cones, they're just little delicate cones. At least they used to be. I haven't had one in years, but they were just little delicate vanilla wafer-like cones and then they have soft serve ice cream that they put in it and these were just vanilla cones for the kids. So they had this technique where they would put the ice cream in the cone and then kind of push up on it and it would have this snowman effect and it would put another soft serve portion of ice cream above that so you had like this soft serve mound soft serve mound and then a little pigtail curly cue at the top and that was the Dairy Queen classic small vanilla ice cream cone passed all those out to the kids <laughs> and there wasn't room enough for everyone to be in the Dairy Queen it was a very small Dairy Queen but there wasn't nearly enough room for all the kids in that little room. So they just had them kind of line up, sitting down around the building with their backs against the wall, eating those ice cream cones. <laughs> and if you ever had an ice cream cone of theirs in the summer, they melt super fast. So like you've got these little kids and they don't really know how to eat an ice cream cone. And it's just within it's seemingly seconds, you've got these you know, the ice cream just dripping all the way down the little cones and onto their hands, and it's just a big mess. And of course, I, being the big kid, I had to teach these little kids how to do it. So I was showing them, you know, you gotta, you gotta use your tongue and you gotta, you gotta go around the top of that cone, see? You gotta keep it from dripping down the sides of the cone. You know what I'm talking about. You gotta keep it from dripping down the sides. You gotta keep it in a circle, see? And of course, you would eat it down and 
eventually you get where all that top ice cream was gone and you just had pushed it down with your tongue into the ice cream cone and you start eating that cone. Well, eventually you'll get down to where you've only got like an inch or left of just the very base of the cone. And at this point, that cone has like started to degrade. Inevitably, it, it's starting to drip some ice cream out the bottom of it. And you've got no choice now. You've got no choice but just put the rest of it in your mouth. Now, I want you to think about that moment when you put the rest of that little Dairy Queen ice cream cone with vanilla ice cream in it into your mouth, what that tastes like. You've got that bready, wafer-like cone with that melted vanilla ice cream in your mouth, okay? And now, do you remember those crushed nuts that Dairy Queen had? It's like these really fine crushed up nuts. They put them on sundaes or banana splits. Put a few of those in your mouth with that cone, that melted ice cream. That's the type of flavor memory that I'm getting from old Toby. It's got this bready, almost cone-like experience with some vanilla, some nuttiness, a dessert type of experience. That's old Toby. Now one of the great things about old Toby for me is that it does not irritate my throat. A lot of times aromatics will irritate my throat and I don't know if that's from the construction of the, the added flavorings or if it's from the burleys that are often used in aromatics because they hold toppings so well probably a combination of both. So a lot of times it's difficult for me to find an aromatic that agrees with me, but this one does. This one gives me no irritation at all, which is really nice. And I would say when it comes to the Country Squires Middle Earth series, the three stand above the, the rest to me, the current iterations of them. Now I've heard Back in the day when they were using McClellan's, Virginia's, and everything was different. But current versions, I'd say my favorites would be Old Toby, Rivendell, which I have reviewed, and then their limited annual release of Mirkwood. If you can get your hands on that the next time it comes out, that's a good one to experience as well. Those will be my top three of theirs. Old Toby, if you're a fan of aromatics, this is one you should give a try. I would love for you to join me over on Instagram. Uh, we often will make little posts there, um, not only about pipes, but cigars and, and uh, good food and good drink, all the fun stuff. Make several posts over there. And I'd love for you, of course, to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to subscribe. Comment on any video, old or new, and I will respond to those as I have time. You can tell from the weather outside we're enjoying spring summer feels like it's on the way that'll be fun thank you so much to my super thanks supporters you can read all about that in the description below and until we talk again go enjoy some good food good drink and a good pipe with some good pipe weed in it like the country squires old toe Thank <laughs> you.